Hello, everybody. This is B for Belarus, our program with Vlad Baranich. Vlad, hello. Hello. You are a country consultant, media analyst, guys, and we continue our coverage of our country from the perspective of insiders, as both uh, Volodya and I live uh, here. We uh, know what's going on in the country in depth, and uh, today we are going to discuss the topic Belarusian balance of security and freedom with the emphasis on uh, social security, of course. Uh, to begin with, I'd like your evaluation of the following data. Uh, more than f- 50% of Belarusians or households live uh, uh, on less than 500 rubles or $250 a month. Is it poverty? Is it okay? Or is it the social standard that Belarusians accept as, an, as a norm in the context of the historic development well uh, let's begin from the end if people do not accept poverty in no country probably they they can well live with that because they have no other choice but uh, they're not happy about it so but you can say uh, for Americans so how uh, well off are Belarusians and you can say well uh, 50% of Belarusians live on less than $250 a month on then he would just uh, gasp and say oh gosh you're so poor you know Well, uh, probably, you know, I like jokes, politically incorrect jokes, and about, like, in the first hour program, I made jokes that, you know, Belarus is like Africa of 19th or mm-hmm. 18th century, the mm-hmm. center of Europe, with, you know, white Negroes living here, mm-hmm. so... Um, Negroes meaning like slavery and this, you know, low state which was then, so it's just no offense, just play on words. But um, uh, here... Uh, Uh, the very good example when people live in exactly such a state mm-hmm. uh, because one hundred dollars one hundred fifty dollars it's mm-hmm. a very very low level of survival I would mm-hmm. say because like if you take Uh, what is the international scale like somebody says like, like United Nations he lives on the family lives on less than a dollar per day yeah today the uh, threshold of poverty is uh, 175 in purchasing power uh, parity so, so this so is if, uh, if there is, there is mother, we don't have poverty based on this uh, calculation if, if there is mother getting such uh, such salary and three kids or I mm-hmm. don't know maybe uh, a husband who has no job so they live on this exact mm-hmm amount mm-hmm. if you mm-hmm. calculate it mm-hmm. per person mm-hmm. so we have this yeah compared uh, to what we had in uh, the middle of the 90s right when the average salary was about 30 40 dollars a month yes, yes. today we have uh, much more and uh, the declared target wage is $500 or 1,000 ruble, which is uh, formally achieved, but at the same time, more than half of the population live uh, receive much less. And then, as uh, the data that I um, mentioned uh, are taken from the uh, opinion poll of uh, conducted in 2018, and still uh, we have, again, 52% of, of, of the population living on less than $250 per person in the family. At the same time, there was another question. So when you uh, were, um, people were asked on uh, what kind of expenditures you can afford with this sort of money. And then you have, uh, uh, I would say, 55-58% of the people that say that, yeah, well, we have enough for food, clothes, but we cannot afford buying a TV set, a fridge, or a washing machine. Again, so for an American, buying a TV set is like, you know, you can buy for li- working one or two days, right? Maybe or, a fridge. Oh, fridge, right, whatever. But again, so this is how poor are Belarusians uh, in relative compare, compared to our uh, colleagues in other countries. Because yeah. Belarusians can say, well, look at the uh, number of appliances uh, every average look household streets, has. Fancy cars. Fancy cars. Or just go outside Minsk. Um, beautiful people, wonderful ladies. Mansions. Uh, mansions. You just no, normal average uh, standard clean European city. At the same time, these numbers... Uh, 
uh, describe a little bit different uh, part, faucet of uh, Belarusian life? You know, uh, why I didn't finish my first mm -hmm. uh, thought, which I began about, you know, for previous program and, you know, this political incorrectness, because when we talk about this topic, this topic may be the most mm -hmm. incredible for some people mm -hmm. to listen to, mm -hmm. because they might say, well, these guys are crazy, they, it mm -hmm. can't be. It can't be in the center of Europe in the 21st century that people could live on $100 mm -hmm. per month. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they come, especially when they come here and see our prices, which are much higher exactly. in, in many, uh, maybe in most of... Uh, Food stuff uh, on average compared to yes. uh, uh, the shopping centers, shopping malls in Poland, Lithuania, definitely Everything. much higher. Everything. Two, up to three times. You know, drugs, medicine. Air tickets, uh, uh, whatever. Air tickets, everything, exactly. just uh, food, uh, everything, excluding utility services, yes. which are definitely cheaper. Yes, uh, that's here when uh, this the the general we recalculate it. So this the figure of 100 can be higher because if you include like 200 for utilities, mm -hmm. so it will be a higher standard. So it is subsidized mm -hmm. for now. Yeah, it is. But subsidized. again, I tell you, when we we we. We uh, speak out these figures, uh, some foreigners, they mm -hmm. just, they can't believe it is possible. Uh, so uh, when we calculate this uh, 50, 50 percent, mm -hmm. 52 percent, it's a huge uh, figure. But again, Minsk is... Uh, Probably is now 50, not 50, like quarter of, but maybe more. 22 percent of the whole population, right? Exactly. Uh, it's officially, but many people come from uh, like 100 kilometers from Minsk. No, we can say that Minsk region and uh, Minsk, it's a hub or Greater Minsk, probably, I would call it. Uh, probably 2.5 million people. Yeah, well, just living, but uh, coming maybe one. I don't know how much, but uh, if you exclude like pensioners and somebody, like mm -hmm. half of population. Um, at least works in me. Yeah, but how can you explain the following uh, uh, controversy or dilemma or like a paradox? We, we see this level of uh, well-being and uh, level of poverty. At the same time, when Belarusians are asked whether they belong to uh, poor people, to rich people, or to middle class, over 60% claim that they belong to middle class. So they want, don't want to call themselves poor, they don't want to be in the middle of everything. Well, it's a matter of self-esteem. If you look on Instagram of some of such, you know, uh, especially young girls, young boys, mm -hmm. not necessarily young, they different people, you can see that they show the fancy living, something like they go in the resorts mm -hmm. and, uh, and the sea, or with fancy cars. In some mm -hmm. cases, they are one of those girls, that she admitted that it was... Uh, not Photoshop, but it was a uh, photo mm -hmm. pavilion where mm -hmm. they had this background mm -hmm. with fancy stuff. So it's a matter of uh, maybe social status. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. can't admit they are such a lowly creatures. Uh, they have, at least in their own eyes, in the eyes of their relatives, mm -hmm. maybe friends, they have to show themselves as somebody important, at least not important, but not as lowly as they, they yes, are. Right. Mm -hmm. as, uh, uh, actually, it comes from, uh, from you know, since uh, the time when the Soviet Union uh, collapsed. I remember mm -hmm. when we were taking part in the first uh, <coughs> exchange between uh, Belarusian State University mm -hmm. and the American State, American Central Michigan University. Mm -hmm. And the Americans came here and they looked on prices mm -hmm. in our for bread. Mm -hmm. And I remember one American guy said, well, that's that's free. It that's was free. it was like uh, recalculate on the uh, no, unofficial course. Uh, bread mm, uh, loaf of bread was five cents. Five well, that's cents. well compared to the um, structure of the price that time was absolutely different yes. from st yes. price structure but in a uh, free market economy. I understand, but uh, today when uh, somebody from Moscow comes up to Minsk and says, "Oh, how, how can I afford going to a cafe restaurant?" Because you have Moscow prices, but the service is lousy. 
So uh, this kind of again, we have uh, this weird uh, creature of uh, when we have centrally planned economy with a lot of Soviet-style management, Soviet-style uh, institutions. At the same time, we pretend to be normal European because the facade or the uh, the uh, appearance, uh, appearance yes. is different from the essence. Appearance is everything in this country. If you look, Minsk is the appearance of the mm-hmm. country. So it's everything is clean, you know, fancy cars, etc. But again, if you recalculate, uh, again, if you ask, uh, most of cars are credited, and uh, sometimes people have to work. Well, that's nothing new, but uh, they they are very insecure. I mean, they have to work and they to do all whims of their bosses, etc. Especially if they work for the state-owned uh, uh, organizations. Don't tell Americans about debt traps, student loan pyramid. One point five trillion dollars. <laughs> uh, the uh, living on debt is much more popular in the United States than I know, in the I know, I know. But uh, let's go. Uh, but here is different a little bit. All right. Go further to a very important issue. When you uh, present a Belarusian a choice, security or freedom, social security for primarily, he definitely would choose social security over freedom. Uh, do you believe that Belarusians realize the cost of this social security system? the cost of Big Brother that eventually emerged as a result of wishes of the people to ensure full employment, uh, low prices, price stability, stable pensions, access to goods and free goods and services, including health care and education. Except uh, free uh, health service and education, again, with uh, some some you know reservations the rest is uh, is nothing i mean uh, there is no social security in past like 10 maybe like 20 years ago when the current mm-hmm. president mm-hmm. you know was in only the young president and uh, there mm-hmm. was a formula that mm-hmm. uh, social sec- there was called social security packet or so social mm-hmm. security Uh, it was social security agreement, as mm-hmm. politologists would call mm-hmm. it, that uh, he gives people stabil- s- mm-hmm. stability mm-hmm. and uh, social security in exchange for loyalty. Loyalty and essentially it's like we agree <clears throat> to pay high taxes, we agree on limited co- competition because we don't believe that free market and uh, private businesses can deliver. That is why we empower uh, politicians to manage our health care, education, pension, and essentially, but this is it. So 25 years ago, uh, people were afraid of these changes, yes. new things. Right now, the question is whether they realize what costs yes. it brought on them, because they had to pay eventually for everything. Uh, but again, about 10 years, maybe like six or years ago, this pattern uh, mm-hmm. has changed. It now mm-hmm. no longer this social security, this The social security mm-hmm. agreement no mm-hmm. longer works. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, authorities, they no longer need mm-hmm. loyalty of people because mm-hmm. uh, efficiently now all elections can be uh, done without electorate. I mean, doesn't matter. We, we have monarchy now. The last uh, democ- uh, relatively democratic election we had in 1994. That's yes, yes. But I mean... Uh, But na- people now- seem to realize, well, only uh, when uh, people were asked about the nature of elections in Belarus, whether they were free and fair and democratic, about 48-50% believe that they were fair and democratic and they had free choice. That's the problem. Well, that's... Uh, I mean, I didn't want to touch this political aspect, I just wanted to say that this uh, pattern of uh, social security um, agreement is broken. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean that uh, we no longer have... People are no longer socially secure. That's a problem. When you mentioned 100, uh, 50% of population live in dire straits. It's that's just compared, again, to relatively, uh, relative to or compared to, with to uh, Poles, uh, Estonians, Well, it gets good Germans. example. They are our but neighbors. The, yeah, but at the same time, who knows what's going on there? Because they get the information from Belarusian TV or Russian TV. And it's uh, all about propaganda and brainwashing. Compared to Tajikistan, 
Uzbekistan, Moldova, or Ukraine, as we uh, people are told uh, through zombie TV, they are well off. They are almost uh, as near to the European standards as uh, Poles. And at the same time, the argument the Belarusian pro- uh, ideologues use is, well, the same, we are independent while Poles, Lithuanians are under the pressure of European uh, Union or NATO. Oh, that's baloney for... Yeah, exactly, but this know, is the, just, how we, the way propaganda works. We're not talking works. about this. I think we are just... Um, our task is now to... In general, when we talk about uh, this country, mm-hmm. about such problems, just to mm-hmm. uh, educate somehow uh, those who are interested in Belarus, what's mm-hmm. going on here? Because mm-hmm. we, from inside, uh, propaganda would tell them uh, that everything is fine, just uh, they came here for these European games, which people call the Hunger Games. Hunger Games. Yes, and um, uh, just uh, th- that's what they see, but we talk contrary to that. Uh, for example, I can tell you why we we have no secure... When mm-hmm. we come to this core of this uh, of this matter mm-hmm. about social security, why I say there is no social security? Let's begin with, uh, say, pensions. Mm-hmm. Uh, looks like... Um, so let's begin with pensions. So they... Let me give you the latest uh, data. In May 2019, average pension in Belarus is 405 rubles, which is uh, about $200 a month. That's average. Uh, some right. people uh, get... Four thousand. Yeah, I understand. Well, it's not four thousand. I don't. I don't think that such people exist. When I analyze the structure of pensions in Belarus, the difference between the minimum and the maximum uh, pension was like three, three, four times. And, but that means, in order for a foreigner to understand how much it is, it's about thirty-eight percent of the average wage in the country. Well, uh, these pensions are still being paid, but there is an uh, increasing number of people who who lost their pensions. Uh, because uh, now... I mean additional contribution, uh, additional payments. Yes, or now they, they changed, radically changed the social security and pension system of the former, mm-hmm. which was, you know, built during the Soviet Union. I mean, you had Chernobyl to people... Yes, they, they were deprived of all, mm-hmm. you know, these additional bonuses, mm-hmm. and uh, they excluded uh, many years, like... Uh, yeah, I, want, I mean, it, it means... From the not, calculation of the pension, uh, understand. Just efficient, what is important. Uh, those people who... Now people have to contribute to the uh, mm-hmm. social security, to the fund, the pension fund. They mm-hmm. have to, you know, when they work, they have to pay there, or their um, mm-hmm. employer has to pay there. But anyway, uh, a lot of people uh, now lost this because, they, they, for example, when I reach the pension, mm-hmm. year, um, pension age, mm-hmm. which for men is 60 now, mm-hmm. I guess. It will be 63 right now. The decision was made oh, yeah, 63. back in 2017. Uh, 63. The gradual transition yes. for men to move yes. from 60 to 63. Yes. yes. For two, Six, from yes. women 63. to 55 yes. to 58. It used to be 60, yes, 63. Right. But... Um, uh, since many things uh, like we, we used to work in past which were included mm-hmm. which uh, during Soviet times I would get my full pension mm-hmm. uh, maybe not such big but I would get my pension, regular pension at, at year f- at, six, at 60, now at 63 I won't get this pension because I did not contribute to that uh, pension fund mm-hmm. so I'll get a uh, pension what is called social you'll get like two hundred one hundred dollars no 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 fifty 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 dollars oh, this well, is called it. this is called this subsistence Here's poverty pension subsistence it's called minimum it's called subsistence level uh, subsi- right. is, uh, actually uh, it is better to translate it literally how to translate right. this is uh, half of the Minimal survival uh, level. Level, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, minimal survival level. So, how can you survive on uh, even on one hundred? But uh, half of that. Well, you should have thought before. You should have worked harder. You should yes. have paid more pay- yes, that's, taxes. That's, that's, that's the that, argument. That's one side. I mean, uh, that's uh, we can discuss about it, uh, you know, separately. But I mean, about social security. There is no social mm-hmm. security. Can such people? 
uh, find themselves in, uh, you know, how you can survive on $50 per month. Uh, so without alternative with euthanasia, uh, they, they have to oh, hope for them. With this <laughs> I mean, <laughs> drastic, dramatic it's, change. It's it's cruelty. I mean, how, how to, to, it is a torture for people. Well, even in the beginning of the 1990s, this is a true uh, uh, feature of uh, Belarusians. Uh, they work hard on their uh, land lots, the dachers, gardens, uh, they uh, always have this food basket from their own work. Uh, they have uh, connections with their families living in the rural areas. About uh, two-thirds of all households get this kind of assistance from uh, their relatives living in the countryside. So even if we do not have any social security benefits, people will not starve no. uh, because they would just work on their pieces of land and that would be like middle, mid, mid, middle ages a way of of living, but uh, it will not, won't be starvation. Let me disagree with you completely. Uh, it, 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 uh, you, you know, not, they don't have the head. It was in past. Uh, mm -hmm. Villages, there are old people living there, and they almost have no livestock. Mm -hmm. And uh, in past, they had pigs, you know, mm -hmm. these are the chicken and mm -hmm. uh, cows, but no longer. Uh, most of young people, they move to, to cities. I understand that. So and average if, if, you, if you talk about duchess, uh, I have, you know, I'm more than, I'm more <laughs> landlord than this, you know, pensioners are. Okay. I have a great garden, you know, with fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, uh, when I look at my neighbors, now from we have like 260 mm -hmm. no you know members of that mm -hmm. uh, dacha society um, communion let's say mm -hmm. so if you go through it i'm one of maybe 10 who keeps this garden and uh, does something with mm -hmm. the land and growing something People just grow, you know, they come there to have a rest, to have a rest mm -hmm. or just just forgot about it. They just built uh, uh, houses to live mm -hmm. there. Oh, that's normal. But my, my point is that uh, when we say whether uh, the wage level or pension level uh, is a factor which would uh, make... Belarusians more politically and uh, socially active? I don't think so, because uh, first uh, about half of Belarusian economy is in the gray area, then you have the level of remittances uh, formal and informal, which reaches about two, two and a half billion dollars a year, and uh, very many people who live in the countryside or small uh, areas, small towns, instead of uh, registering as unemployed in these government institutions, what they do is they send their kids or they go themselves uh, uh, to work uh, abroad, to work in yes. Russia, to work in the European Union. Right now, when the labor markets in uh, European Union countries are, are booming, uh, a lot of Belarusians are considering the option to go there. And uh, again, when you take into account the uh, recent uh, amendments to the draft conscription laws or the way to ensure military security, when uh, young people will must go to the army, they won't be able to finish higher education. Or if they don't go to the army, they will get a stamp in their passport that they cannot go, go abroad. They cannot get, be employed by any governmental institution. So essentially, we're talking about a huge uh, incentive for them to consider living in Belarus uh, or to leave abroad because this is the best, better option for them to uh, make their dreams come true. Well, we came for the very hard part of it, uh, yeah. finally, because uh, when we're talking about, I would call it not social security, it's asocial security, because uh, there is no longer this... With pensions, we, we, we a little bit explained that mm -hmm. uh, you finally get your pension or many people will get this uh, half of the minimum survival mm -hmm. level. So... Um, uh, here we came to the question of mm -hmm. employment. Uh, mm -hmm. It is very difficult to get high-paid job now, mm -hmm. uh, especially especially with this gender gap, I mean, gender, how to say it, uh, disadvantage, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, after 45 it is almost impossible to find mm -hmm. a job. Even some janitor maybe, I don't know, <laughs> very low-paid job. So. Um, uh, there is no other option uh, 
Well, young people, they can go abroad to work, mm -hmm. but for people of 50... Well, yeah, 50 and uh, uh, older, it's, it is a problem. But at the same time, we see that there is a outflow, a migration of labor, uh, migration of brain power, migration of entrepreneurs is uh, intensifying because people do not have normal favorable conditions for doing business. People yes. don't have no normal conditions for even finishing higher education. And then when you have this uh, huge threat that you will get a passport, Uh, stamp in your passport which will limit your uh, potential in the labor market, limit your potential as a citizen. So and then I think I would speculate that many relative, many parents would consider moving abroad when their kids are uh, 10, 12 years old in order to avoid going to the yes. army which is considered not to be a good place for, for, for boys to, to go to. Well, you know, some people, you know, foreign listeners might not understand why Why we're afraid like Germans. Mm -hmm. They would not understand why they're afraid to go to, to the army, which is, is like in our compar in comparison with our army, they have like uh, Boy Scout camp. <laughs> Paradise, right. <laughs> yes, with the vacation center. Here, army is kind of more like a prison. You, you, have no, you have no other choice but go to prison or go to the army. When I served in Soviet army, I was asking myself, you know, this type of rhetorical question, people are imprisoned for mm -hmm. some crime they did, what mm -hmm. I was imprisoned for. <laughs> so yeah, well, I was in the Soviet Army, and essentially at that time as I came from the countryside, I didn't even think, I didn't even know that I had an option not to go there, because that was like Soviet Union, yes. I incurred and everything. Right now, when people uh, see different options, and when they, uh, again, the army, the military, it is not in the communication with anybody. So essentially right now uh, amendments to the uh, law uh, were drafted without any consultation with civil society, with mothers, with parents, with young organizations. And well, the, uh, uh, the fact that the petition against these stupid amendments uh, got over 10,000 signatures uh, in one day means that this outrage, outburst of anger is, uh, is going to happen in the near future, or if it is stifled, then people just definitely will go abroad and and uh, show their middle finger to the motherland, which hates them. Well, that's simply understood, because uh, going to the army, it means sometimes, it means, you know, it is... Facing very severe facing risks of losing health, health. Uh, at least losing time and uh, not life. getting anything. And yeah, life life. in some you know, cases. There are many cases now uh, became evident when due to bullying or yeah, just right. uh, from the... Hazing, hazing. Which hazing, is yes. Uh, people are you know, many, not many, but some, some are dead. Uh, they and were killed. The, the biggest yeah. issue is, again, when people don't realize the price, the cost of empowering uh, bureaucrats and the, the state, the people People search uh, social security, material security, somehow uh, labor market security, and the price uh, tag that they face is so huge and is growing that then they realize, oh gosh, if, uh, if uh, this kind of policeman or the state man comes to their household and uh, claims more money, more pre private uh, assets and property, then they start uh, crying. Oh no, I don't want this because this is not human. This is no, not acceptable any longer. But they've been waiting for this moment for 25 years when somebody, some people protested. They say, oh, this opposition. They want their, like, you know, their own uh, egos to uh, please and they don't want, uh, they don't understand people. So the people right now have to face a very uh, difficult uh, truth that they themselves were stakeholders of these bad things that happened to the country under uh, Lukashenko and his uh, team. Again, we, we were talking about this, the issue of uh, how people react to this and how they behave mm -hmm. in such conditions uh, in past our you know, programs mm -hmm. when we were talking about how Belarus differs from Russia mm -hmm. and about this uh, general mm -hmm. um, mentality of people here because mm -hmm. it's part of mentality of, uh, of people. They come, they mostly come, the most culture is peasants' culture. And, yep. you know, peasants in its... Uh, 
communist collective farm which is serfs you know serfs of in middle ages in middle age you know this uh, term of of the the meaning of these mm -hmm. serfs so they 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 tend not to fight they're not fighters they, no, they're survivors is, yeah my point is when you have your own piece of land your uh, house your reputation your family coat of arms to defend to protect then this is your motherland this is your small motherland this is your country this is what you fight for if you're a serf, serf which yes. is the uh, status of yes, uh, yes. Uh, young people you and know, Bel Belarusians uh, uh, got from the government they allegedly support and elected then uh, then whether you change you think of changing a master like you instead of Lukashenko you get a foreign master that uh, seems to be more benevolent richer uh, he promises better things uh, in a more convincing way or you leave the country that's why I, I came with this, you know, politically incorrect joke about uh, you know, white Negroes. Yes, a massa. <laughs> you know, yes, a massa. This, this is the, the general attitude. You know, yes, a massa. Uh, it's uh, they 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 try somehow to cheat this massa. They try to somehow avoid or run away from from him or, and uh, not to fight. Yeah, at the same time, Belarusians are not emotional. They don't want. They are not uh, eager to uh, show any emotions, negative, positive. And at the same time, when, uh, for example, head of BPS uh, Savings Bank, Igor Merkulov, came to Minsk, he, uh, observing Belarusians, said that there are two distinct features which are different from uh, from Russia. First is uh, Belarusians have this strange, from his perspective, love to the dollar, the U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. And that's understandable because we've never had any price to Yes. Uh, in ruble terms. And secondly, uh, Belarusians are very disciplined in paying off their debts, which is not the case in Russia and definitely which is not the case in many yes, other countries. That's, that's, so that's somehow, but this culture, you, this, is, this culture is being eroded by the behavior of the government, by the behavior of uh, state-owned enterprises, because they ignore their debts, they ignore their obligations. And like, uh, for example, pension fund. Uh, recently, Minister of uh, Finance got an order from Lukashenko to audit so-called pension reform, which never happened in our country. The I think the idea is to, again, increase uh, pension age and to make getting state pension even more difficult. Yes. So essentially what we are facing is when this Leviathan or the big brother is uh, facing financial difficulties it uh, it gets more and more loans and the tag and uh, the burden of of uh, uh, servicing loans is getting heavier uh, the government says instead of uh, giving more freedom to the people it says well you will have to pay more for your security, for your well-being, but we will, you won't get a choice to be a full-fledged owner or manufacturer of goods and services. You know, there are many contradictions here, because on one side, you call him brother, it's no longer brother, it's, uh, I don't know, owner. Sort of big brother is like yes. from Orwell's uh, But you see, in Orwell, definition. They, they had some form of uh, this uh, twisted form of uh, social security. They mm -hmm. were giving something like... Uh, uh, form of like if you take Kurt Vonnegut's uh, yeah. piano player, right. uh, they had this you know elite which high mm -hmm. with high IQ, these engineers and, mm -hmm. and the, the the rest they were doing some you know casual jobs, mm -hmm. but they were kept with everything they were provided with everything mm -hmm. they needed for. Uh, minimum standard living, you know, they were not mm -hmm. hungry, etc. Here we talk about the survival. If people live, you see, um, the question was how they can they survive for this fifty, you know, for one hundred dollars. In many cases, this only the stati official statistics. Uh, we have a huge shadow, even black. That's what I said. Economy, right? economy, right? Uh, hidden from, and that's why uh, because people don't pay taxes, they work somewhere else. Like for example. Mm -hmm. They're builders. They mm -hmm. work, for example, I want to build a mansion somewhere, mm -hmm. like on my dacha. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, find some guys who, who work for me, they, they're builders, and there are plenty mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. I pay them money, they, they just work for me, and right. they pay no taxes. There are many 
uh, like uh, repair shops for cars, and again they they they, they do this illegally. But Volodya, this is uh, well the ultimately when you mm -hmm. look at one parameter, which uh, describes the quality of the social security system and the well uh, well being level in the country is demography. In 1995, we uh, had 10.2 million uh, people with demo negative demographic changes. Uh, after 25 years, uh, we had about 800,000 people less. We had the outflow of 1.3 million people from the countryside. We have very... Uh, the huge concentration of people living in Minsk, uh, Minsk area and uh, regional cities. We have migration of uh, one million Belarusians. They vote against this kind of system and when the government uh, continues to multiply stupidities in uh, military conscription, in taxation, in property rights, in uh, utility uh, prices, then even more people would go abroad because I don't know what uh, the government should do in order to uh, force people out to the street, like in Brest. We have people because uh, there is a uh, Protesting battery, that, battery uh, plant yes. that uh, uh, threatens to pollute air and, and land. Lead. They were afraid of that's lead. Right, that's pollution. right. So this is their own property there, and that's why they've been protesting for a year and a half, and re only now Brest authorities uh, uh, notice that. Uh, but uh, like, do you believe that uh, after adoption of the amendments to the conscription rules, uh, young people, students would finally raise their heads and start protesting against the government? I don't think they will. Because uh, students right now are like, you know, no, they no, no. are uh, nowhere. Belarusians are shadow guerrillas, you know, they, they're like, they call country of partisans, which means partisan guerrilla fighters, right. and they're hiding in forests and doing occasional uh, acts of sabotage against the enemy. So yeah, well, but, but when we were students, right, the student uh, environment was very energetic, dynamic, it was the driving force uh, behind many changes. Right now, I do not see any young people, they have uh, some topics which which they've been promoting, like uh, legalizing marijuana, like uh, this conscription, uh, limited way. But there is like this uh, Komsomol type of the state-run uh, organization. And uh, young people, if they had a choice, uh, many of them just uh, seek uh, employment, education abroad without even any ties to Belarus. Well, that's the easiest, I mean, not the easiest, I mean, that's the most rational choice, I would say, because because uh, to fight against this le Leviathan, mm -hmm. it's just... Um how can you fight with bare arms against uh, SWAT, you know, uh, armed, uh, you know, armed... Well, I understand that you're talking about, well, there's no way to resist this big, huge monster. But at the same time, there are many ways to uh, fight the monster in your own head. Because if uh, Belarusians believe that the government must deliver free education, free health care, pensions, employment, benefits, housing, uh, you name it. No, no, right? they no longer believe it. No, I mean, no, that's, that's... they do. This is the point that I, uh, in this value uh, uh, poll that uh, one Belarusian think tank uh, conducted in 2018, uh, there was a question, what the state should do and what it is doing. And should do is like this uh, value imperative of a person. Uh, from 85 to 98 percent of Belarusians believe that the government must do what I enumerated. And that's the problem. That's their desire, but exactly. uh, the reality is different. That's yeah, why. That, but no, no, but the desire. People wish that to happen. They live in this utopia that the government is, or Leviathan, or the Big Brother, is a, an entity which somehow can, like uh, Santa Claus, uh, delivers goods free for everybody, uh, not only on New Year Eve, but uh, 20, uh, 365 days a week. Yeah, the, uh, days a week. This wishes, the, but they are they're broken again against the reality, because yep. when they come to the... Well, we didn't mention, actually, the most uh, shocking, probably, for our listeners, mm -hmm. aspect of this so-called social security, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. unemployment. For yep. example, unemployment. If somebody becomes unemployed, 
Uh-huh. He has to pay to the state for his exactly. Need. This is that's, another. That's re- I mean, that's that's what you know. Some people sometimes when you try to explain this to the foreigner, they think you're crazy or you don't understand. <laughs> you talk a different language. People let's, who don't work are called parasite or freeloaders, and they're supposed to not not to pay a tax, which was the initial plan of the government, but they pay higher. Uh, uh, more for uh, heating, for electricity. Essentially, the utility bill is much higher because they are not employed. Well, let's uh, you know return to the um, original how events uh, mm-hmm. developed. Uh, originally, they imposed a kind of tax mm-hmm. on those uh, who are not officially mm-hmm. working. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are called, you know, these uh, bad words like parasite, you know, lazy bum, mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It, you know it is a Russian word mm-hmm. is tuniyadis. It comes mm-hmm. from the Soviet That's right. times. For example, uh, uh, famous uh, poet uh, Joseph Brodsky, Brodsky. Mm-hmm. he was imprisoned for mm-hmm. being tuniyadis because in mm-hmm. Soviet times it was illegal not yeah. to work officially. Yeah, exactly. So people were imprisoned for, you know, several years uh, as a, a, a social element in some like social uh, 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 enemy of the Soviet system. Well, a social element, or you know, yes, he was kind of uh, bad guy. Mm-hmm. So uh, now they they try to revive this system, mm-hmm. and uh, they, they imposed this tax of two hundred dollars per year. No, but this tax does not exist now. They have yes, a different they, they way of writing. They mm-hmm. made, but. You know, uh, the the problem with that for them mm-hmm. was people were openly protesting. Mm-hmm. Again, mm-hmm. people would not pay, and uh, mm-hmm. it was difficult to get that money from them. Mm-hmm. But now they made much... Tri- mm-hmm. and it was too apparent for mm-hmm. outer world that, this, mm-hmm. that unemployed people have to pay. Yep. Now they did a trick. They just mm-hmm. uh, use... Uh, what mm-hmm. they call this mm-hmm. uh, uh, utility bills. Well, if, right. you, if you go to any country, in like the United States, well, it's good to pay utility bills. So mm-hmm. what's wrong with that? All right. <laughs> the wrong with that, I mean, which, which you don't understand. Like, for example, um, uh, all utility bills are being s- subsided. I mean, they are, their state pays, uh, well, at, at least they say that they provide the services for lower cost for everybody, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even those who are filthy rich. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, those people who are not officially uh, registered as a job mm-hmm. or don't pay the security mm-hmm. payments to in, into the you know, pension fund, etc., etc., they uh, they have to pay uh, for heating, extra for heating, electricity, uh, electricity probably for gas, or some s- technical assistance, uh, like technical uh, services. The most, of, the most uh, expensive the is the most expensive for part is the heating, right? Heating exactly. because it's centralized. You can't, and so again, only owners of property. So so because if you are not owner yeah you don't they can get nothing from you mm-hmm. and uh, so that's that, that's the point uh, if you if you can't pay sell your property sell your apartment if you keep your apartment so then you're a rich man you can afford it well, yeah, well and um, this approach uh, it makes uh, out a world to think there's nothing bad about it you just pay uh, utilities. That's normal. You have to pay utilities uh, anywhere in the world. So that's very difficult to explain. But like again, that's why many, so many people in the West romanticize Soviet Union, believing this is uh, about justice and yes. uh, stability and uh, and uh, sharing uh, the values and assets of the society in an equal way, equality okay. and okay. justice. For example, okay, uh, for example, I am Tuniyadis. I I decided to go to the the, to, to get job, so I go officially registered, mm-hmm. and when somebody officially registered, mm-hmm. probably nobody would believe my words. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much you know? Uh, mm-hmm. How how much he gets for mm-hmm. his uh, unemployment? Uh-huh. How much mm-hmm. assistance is? Twelve dollars. Twelve dollars. Exactly. And not just they give them you twelve dollars. You have to work on some menial jobs like Public gathering works. stones, <laughs> right. like in Kam- Kambuk in uh, Khmer Cleaning Rouge. dirt, exactly. Uh, yes, you know, doing something lowly, lowly, lowly jobs, very humiliating sometimes. If you're, you know, well, essentially of- that the point when you uh, people would like this kind of uh, security. At the same time, they do not understand the costs and transaction costs of price regulation. 
regulation, licensing, uh, import uh, limitations, uh, special status for nomenclatura, uh, government SEOs, state uh, SOE, state-owned enterprises. So when you over essentially calculate the tax burden. Uh, per person and regulatory burden per person then would that means that you know, the uh uh, there's a tax freedom day, but the uh, the day of freeing of freedom from the government obligations in Belarus comes somewhere in July. So essentially, uh, more than a half a year, people have to work for Big Brother in order to and for what? For ensuring uh, uh, stability, security, and well-being. So this is the highest price ever because you look at uh, free countries with much more freedom and the choice. And in these countries, uh, the uh, burden uh, that the government imposes on, on its citizens is much, much lower. So Belarusians, because they don't understand basic uh, finance, uh, economics, they don't understand, they cannot, cannot reason in terms of costs and price and, and benefit, they are kind of uh, victims of this approach and essentially Belarus in this case it declares to be a country with so high social standards but in fact this is the country where uh, social security is ensured and guaranteed uh, for a very limited number of people working with the government and uh, distributing over to 20 billion dollars government uh, money uh, through different uh, levels of the budget well, we still have uh, social security in the form of medical care, you know, it's, uh, it is still affordable, mm -hmm. it is still free, sometimes, not sometimes, mm -hmm. but well, it depends where you live, in Minsk it's much easier. Uh, you have to lie in for, you know, have to get mm -hmm. appointment for a certain uh, physician, mm -hmm. like even two weeks ahead if mm -hmm. it is like uh, ophthalmologist or some mm -hmm. narrow specialist. But any in any case, you get this. Uh, if if there is some Im Im emergency, mm -hmm. you'll get that emergency treatment. There are you know clinics, uh, they are free still. So this is the point where. Mm -hmm. If you take, for example, there are some very expensive operations, surgical operations, they, they do free of charge. Mm -hmm. So if you compare it with American, yeah, where people can't more. afford it, uh, it's uh, like if you remember more... In America, we, you can uh, get money from different foundations that uh, support and sponsor such operations in Belarus. But anyway, I mean, most, you know, like uh, general, like if you look mm -hmm. at the uh, mm -hmm. it is, uh, Moore's uh, movie about mm -hmm. uh, healthcare system in the United States where men yeah. had to choose uh, save mm -hmm. which finger to save. Uh, mm -hmm. So... That's and right. Which one had to lose uh, because he didn't have m money to pay for? Here, uh, both fingers would be placed if if you if you live uh, to get your place in line. No, 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 no. Uh, such emergency things. Um, I no, have, we're talking about emergency, but we're talking about it's uh, some operations which are rare and essentially, if you oh, yes. this is a problem uh, in the countryside in little uh, countryside. Towns, yes, there if you need uh, assistance and services of a specialized doctor, there's yes. a line. Yes, like three yes. up to uh, a year. That's again, uh, we talk about Minsk versus uh, the rest, rest of, of the country. Belarus, because there, if, if you want to look at how Belarus lo looks outside, um, and in our first program, I think I mentioned one guy mm -hmm. uh, who visited many, you know, he, he traveled all mm -hmm. around Belarus and been to small towns, uh, cities. Uh, mm -hmm. This guy, I have a link to him on my website, expat.by, this Englishman, and mm -hmm. uh, he showed excellent, he did excellent job. He showed how people live in those small towns. It's very interesting. Well, essentially, to finalize, uh, one uh, beautiful illustration that uh, shows this uh, model that we've been living in is the huge line in front of the kids' hospital uh, at 6 a.m. Uh, because in Brest, because people oh, need yes. to get some uh, certificate or paper for for children to go to school. Six 
in the morning the huge line yes. at the same time uh, the government spends uh, tons of money on very different projects and like now we are uh, in the heat of the European games and uh, I like this uh, numbers that Minister of Finance announced that uh, over five, about 550 million rubles which is like 275 yes. uh, million dollars mm-hmm. were spent on uh, the games which is more than five times than the uh, preliminary declared uh, sum of money. So essentially, this is the way of planning. Okay, let's uh, do European games. What is the price tag? The price tag is $50 million. In the end of the day, it is five, six times more. And this is the efficiency and the way to plan financial expenditures. That's why pastors here, local pastors here, you know, politically active pastors, they call them hunger games. Hunger games. That's why it's so irritates yep. uh, uh, official propaganda. They even had on TV. They had a kind of talk show between uh, the, you know the propaganda mm-hmm. leading propagandists mm-hmm. uh, who were making jokes. Oh, it's you know like in Krakow in Poland, Krakow now strives for getting these uh, games <laughs> Game next way. year, no, no, next time, and next year. I don't know which, how, how often they in know, four years, I believe. In four years. So next time, so Krakow, you know, that's why I have. Polish, you know, in, in, in the in European Union, how stupid they are. Well, we we are Hunger Games there, so it just they just you know they they, they play on uh, they. They, they, are they, they so stupid or they probably they, know, they realized it very well that Krakow is the, the little, little part of Poland and it's a private matter. All right. We definitely, Volodya and I definitely would like uh, Belarusians to live longer, better, uh, more fulfilling lives when they control their assets, their lives, their savings, their pensions. This is not the case right now. Of course, Belarus is not uh, Uganda or Congo or Tur- Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan it has never been but essentially the biggest uh, problem I have with the Belarusian model is the opportunity costs. When you look at what uh, Baltic states achieved uh, Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia and in 1991 we were at the same level of uh, prosperity and well-being right now they are way 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 up uh, in a different uh, uh, group of uh, social security and, and, uh, and prosperity while we we are still fighting with the transitional period, transitional problems. And this is the definitely what would uh, have an impact on economic situation, on uh, demography, on education, on the quality of governance as well. But it is still a good chance for foreign listeners to find a smart and old uh, how to say old tradition <laughs> wife here to oh get gosh. some smart guys uh, for their jobs outside you know because we still have uh, decent education uh, they can get for example physicians physicians mm-hmm. here they get mathematicians physicians chemistry biology uh, yes yeah, a lot of specials I mean wh- why we're talking about like well, since we're talking about social security mm-hmm. it means we're talking about problems with you know, huge lines mm-hmm. in, in hospitals because oh, really? uh, doctors they get uh, like 200 300 dollars per month and certainly with their qualification we have, we still have good quality education in medical because my son he, mm-hmm. he studied at the medical university at the same time uh, we have uh, the deficit of over 3500 uh, doctors yes, because uh, they in leave the country. domestic market my son left actually that's right because of uh, the stupid price regulation wage regulation and uh, the way that essentially the government turned all doctors and medical workers into serfs of the system. They must allegedly. You are doctors. You must understand, realize the, no, the special duty you uh, have uh, in Belarus. And this kind of approach definitely ruins uh, medical system, education system. Absolutely. And eventually is a threat to our country and its uh, social security. Well, John, thank you so much for the program, for your input. Uh, we've been talking for over 50 minutes. I think that's enough. Yes. Uh, let me remind you that Volodya Baranich is country 
Public Consultant and Media anal Analyst, expat by uh, expat author dot by, yes. by uh, author. You can go there and uh, follow what's going on in our country. He delivers different different interesting materials. If you have any additional questions and you would like to clarify uh, any specific issues, yes. please feedback is welcome. Uh, yes, so write, uh, write, me write, me write, and write us, uh, ask, pose questions, and social social networks, and we'll be most willing and delighted to uh, clarify all the issues you have. Thank you so much. Uh, see you in two weeks. Uh, cheerio. Goodbye.